First off, I just want to say thank you all for coming to the event, uh, as well as I just want to inform you that while we have about 130 people here, we have about the same amount, roughly, in virtual space. So I am, I am extremely thrilled by the, the fact that we had such a great turnout and that we have an extremely excellent slate of speakers and panels during the course of this weekend. Um, so I just wanted to say again, thank you all for, for coming and spending the time and, and investing in, in this type of an effort because it's extremely rare in the United States and in the world for us to get scientists all together to talk about this subject. And we are, uh, I'm just, I couldn't be any more thrilled than this, right? Uh, so again, thank you. Uh, I just want to also to tell the, all the people in the audience that are in the virtual space of the world, because I might be balancing between two worlds. You know, isn't that amazing? I'm in the multiverse, you know, I should, uh, multiverse of madness, you know, if you think about that, right, Dr. Strange? Uh, and, you know, I just want to say that this is kind of strange, but we're going to do the best we can to be able to keep both worlds happy. Uh, I just want to point out to the people who are in virtual space, that to attend any of these sessions, you must go to that session on the agenda and click on view session in order to be able to attend that session. Don't think that after that's done that you can not hit on the view session at the next session. Uh, you need to do that because here's the reason why. You are asking questions and you might be in the last session asking something that's in the next session and I'm not gonna see the questions. On all the people who are in this room, you have index cards on your table and you have pens. That's for you to ask your questions. And I'm gonna to try to balance between the virtual questions as well as the in-person questions. Also to let you know that I've got staff that have white little, little ribbons hanging on them who are going to be collecting your questions on the inside here and then those will, bring, those will come to me and I'll try to address between the two worlds. Anyway, uh, speakers are, only, uh, are the, gonna be the only ones that are enabling their microphones if, uh, and video feeds online. You don't need to do that. Uh, hopefully for most of you, you were able to join online on the networking session. While in-house here, we were actually having our happy hour. So uh, just to let you know, we have an online networking event going on up there while we're doing our thing and they're getting to meet people up there. Pretty neat, huh? Um, the sessions are also going to be recorded. Uh, I have this incredible team up here that have got everything, lights, cameras, action, the whole nine yards that are recording this thing. And we, we went out all out in terms of getting a professional organization to do this so that we could deliver the best quality of this whole conference. Uh, this is the lesson we've learned after doing it three times, by the way. Uh, let, me, let me also point out to you that uh, it's basically a situation where uh, we're going to have this available to you in Whova for up to three months. And then later at the, and you, so you can go watch any presentations that you miss repeatedly as much as you want. At the same time, I'm also, we'll be moving it at the end of the year over to our SCU YouTube channel. All right. And we did that with last year's virtual conference. And it seemed to be really great because again, we're keeping everybody focused on what it is that we're learning. And we're all about being transparent. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm encouraging people not to take any live streams. When the first time we did this, we had people live streaming us on Facebook and it was like, oh my God, this is a mess. Anyway, we didn't want to do that because we want to make sure that it was professionally done and everything else. So that's why we do it. Uh, I'm going to go on into the conference. The title of this conference we decided was going to be Where Science and UAP Meet. I think it's ultimately about bringing together this whole subject in a science context together, right? And that's what it's about. It's about bringing scientists and people to talk about it from a scientific standpoint. And that's what SU is trying to achieve. That's why we exist. We're trying to be a think tank to be able to help promote that scientific discover, dis, you know, discovery and collaboration. And that's what we're about. We're wanting to get... And if, if, if many of you know about Jacques Vallée, you know he wrote the book called The Invisible College. Well, I'm trying to make that visible. So, and we have that all coming together and people now willing to start to talk about this subject openly 
and not being laughed at or humiliated because they believe in this thing. So I just want to say that it's important that we carry on that message. And I'm just, again, thankful for you all coming to Huntsville, Alabama. Welcome to Huntsville. Uh, it's also called the Rocket City. And guess what? We just got rated number one in the nation for the places to live <laughs> by the U.S. News and World Report. So actually, there's, I mean, there's a reason to be here, you know. Uh, but anyway, we're very excited. Uh, little introduction about me. I don't know that many of you might not know me at all. I've, I've been, since I was age 13, in my eighth grade science class, and I was told to do a book report on UFOs. I didn't know what it was. I went up to the teacher, my science teacher, and said, I'm going to do a book report on UFOs. He said, I said, what's a UFO? He said, unidentified flying object. And I said, what is that? He said, have you ever heard of flying saucers? Oh, yeah, yeah, I watched that science fiction movie. That was great. So anyway, bottom line was I was told to go do a book report, and, or actually not a book report, actually deliver a presentation for 10 minutes. I was terrified. Now you can't get me to shut up. But anyway, I, so 10 minutes I had to give this presentation on this subject about, you know, I knew nothing about. Well, bottom line was I got a D on that report uh, <laughs> that day because I couldn't answer a single question that my science teacher knew a lot about. He said, well, what about jet pursuits of these things? I said, what jet pursuits are you reading? I read this book called My Trip to Venus. <laughs> you know, and I'm going like, what? You know, anyway, bottom line was I didn't know, I couldn't answer any question. Well, that night I went home and guess what was, as Walter Cronkite gets on the news and says, well, I'd like to tell you a story about this object in Socorro, New Mexico, where a police officer saw this object that was out in there, it's Lonnie Zamora, and, uh, and by the way, there was like shrubs that were burned or something of that nature. There were footprints from beings. I'm going like, wow. So a couple days later, I had an aunt that took me to a bookstore, and I got my first legitimate book on the subject. It was called The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects by Captain Edward Ruppelt, the former head of Project Blue Book. I am opening up this book, and it's saying that just up the road from me in Dayton, Ohio, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, there is an Air Force project that's studying this. And I'm going like, I was shocked. So next thing you know is I, my disinterest became a super extreme interest at age 13, to the point where any kind of like news clipping out there on the subject or anything I could get my hands on, I was doing it. Next minute, I was like age 15, running around the city of Dayton, giving lectures to everybody in the town. And the next thing I know is Phil Donahue got a hold of me, and I was on Phil Donahue's show before he went to Chicago and really became famous. And the next thing I know, I, I became in Dayton the UFO guy. Now imagine this, I'm 15 years old and I'm running around the city of Dayton at all hours of the night investigating UFOs that people are reporting. Well, on some occasions, I was sitting next to a Project Blue Book officer who was doing the same case. So I would, so we would have conversations. I said, well, you know, hey, look, I'm doing this and you're doing this, let's compare notes. Next thing I know, I was connected to the base in Project Blue Book. And I actually got somebody to give me the, the, the telephone number to the uh, radar approach control and I was able to contact them, you know, any hour of the night about objects that were in the sky. So now, and, and I actually had police officers that were carrying me and transporting me to sightings. Think about that. Isn't that impressive? I mean, the sirens are going and we're racing out to 30 people standing out looking at the planet Venus. <laughs> I had to break it in the news to them. Sorry, so sorry. Anyway, the gist of it is that I've been at this for a long time. I've been, I was back in the, the organization called MUFON, which was the Mutual UFO Network, at the time when it was called the Midwest UFO Network. It was just founded in 1969. I also had the occasion to be able to meet, uh, you know, Heineck on multiple occasions. I've been in a home. I've met most of the people that were early in the project. I compared notes with them. Uh, they were lecturing around the city of Dayton, and I would be talking to them. And then uh, I went on from there. I, in 1978, I had 3,000 people that actually attended a MUFON symposium in the city of Dayton. And 
Heineck was there presenting and a whole bunch of other people were presenting and it was like the most incredible conference. It's the largest that they, MUFON ever had. Up until about 2017, I was with MUFON. I, I'm a lifetime member, by the way. I was the state director for Alabama. I was a state director for Mississippi. I was also the deputy director of investigations. I was a star team manager uh, looking at certain cases and the, and the most critical cases, which by the way, Robert Bigelow was very interested in. But at the same time, I was doing all those kind of like, you know, case handlings and, and stuff like that. And then to make a long story short, uh, I basically, around the 2015 area, uh, we got a, a case handed to us in MUFON, but we were told not to go through MUFON. I had to nine, sign a non-disclosure agreement. So did Robert Powell and about uh, four others of us. And we ended up being in a situation where that's the Aguadilla case that we looked into, that if you go up on our, our website, you'll see actually our report on that Aguadilla case. Uh, and it ultimately ended up where we ended up in 2017 deciding to form SCU, Scientific Coalition of Ufology at the time. And we've changed our name since to UFO, or UAP studies. Anyway, that's about me. But let me point out to you that uh, I couldn't be doing any of this without the support of one lady who's in this room, and that's my wife, Rhonda, who is sitting right up here in front. And she has tolerated for the last six months me trying to put this conference together and not being present throughout that whole time. I have literally been not present and trying to engage to bring this all about. Um, anyway, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about me and to say, because I'm gonna be introducing all the presenters, but to let you know who I was. And I couldn't be any more thrilled than I am right now than I, to have all of you coming together because even back in the early days when I was dealing with Heineck, they were trying to be able to get uh, scientists engaged in open discussion about this. And so for me, this is a life dream. Thank you. <clears throat> this is our third conference. Our first conference was in 2019. And it was actually in this restaurant. We had 116 people that attended. It was all in person. We didn't do anything virtual. We tried to have one in 2020, but you all know, know what happens. Pandemic, right? We had to cancel it at the last minute. 2021, things were still not improved, so we ended up going strictly on a virtual basis. That was a success where a lot of people were using Whova and really liked the tool. I mean, everybody thought it was a really fabulous tool. So we decided to use it again and, and also to, to tie in. And, I must be really nuts because I decided to add in in-person and virtual at the same time in this one. But again, I, I'm hoping it all works out and I've got a tremendous amount of staff and wonderful people that have helped me to put it together. Uh, so I just want to say uh, that good luck with the conference. I hope you enjoy the tool out there that people are having. And also for you people in, inside, enjoy that tool. There's a lot of collaboration and discussion going on. UF, UIPs have become a global conversation at a level that I have not seen in my 58 years. You have to understand that back when I was doing it, it was like, you know, pretty like small and, you know, there might have been a few other countries, but around the world, everybody was seeing it. And, and now we have all these collaboration tools that allow people to come to this conference even. We got people attending this conference from all different parts of the world. I got people from France, I got people from the UK, I got people from Scotland, I got people from Australia that are attending, I got people from South America that are attending, I got people from all over the globe who are coming together to be able to hear just what we're having to share here. That's tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. And so we're starting to see governments coming out and openly admitting the fact that, you know, that they're gonna study it. If they're not engaged now, that they will. And that, all that has changed because of within the last few years, the conversation has been changed. And it's, you have an official government, uh, government response that's saying that these, they're, they're real. 
You can't Im imagine the validation that that is for me to be able to now say to all my family who are like saying I'm a nutcase, <laughs> that they're real, you know? <laughs> you know? I mean, wow. Anyway, I, I just think that it's incredible. I think that there's a lot of people in this room that are helping to create the conversation on a global basis and bringing science into the fold. And I keep encouraging that. And hopefully in my lifetime, I'll see that that answer comes about because I think technology is also picking up on that as well. I have an incredible slate of speakers that I want to point out to you. Robert Powell fundamentally brought together for this conference. Okay, so kudos to you, Robert, for making this happen. I, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's tremendous. We've got people, uh, we're gonna have a virtual presenters as well as in person here. So I just wanted to point you out. We decided to also have three panels uh, during the course of this conversation. One on, on science and uh, national security uh, and where they connect and where they disconnect maybe. Uh, at the same time, we're gonna be talking about some of the SCU projects we got going on, helping you to understand what we're, where we're from. At the same time, we're also gonna be talking about UAPs and academia. What do we do to bring this into the college environment for universities and have that conversation continu continued? Because guess what? There's a lot of gray haired people in this room. We're all gonna go on and pass. I'm not looking at any one person, but, but anyway, the gist is that they're, I mean, I'm looking at a mirror. Uh, but anyway, the, the gist of it is that we want young people to be educated in on this subject as well and to carry on when we move on, right? So it's important that we get young people engaged. I know I've given uh, uh, talks to many colleges uh, on this subject. I know that there's a number of other people in the room who have done the same thing. And we need to look and explore in terms of how do we make that work even better. One of our keynote presenters tomorrow morning is a gentleman from Dr. Hayan uh, Kayal from Germany. And he's doing that at the University of Würzburg, bringing that school into the fold. Anyway, so I just wanted to point out to you, I, I want to say thank you to all the panelists that are attending for being willing to come and do this, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say, as do everybody else. You can't have a conference without having other people to, uh, to support you. So I had a conference planning team consisting of Robert Powell, Morgan Bell, uh, Peter Reale, who's in the room. Uh, Lee Dines, by the way, is in the room and helping out. Uh, Eric Davis is sitting up front. He is also in the room. Steve Sharples uh, and Alejandro Rojas and Kevin Wright. So, I mean, we have a conference planning team. We met for, uh, you know, every, almost like every month looking at this for the last, you know, six or seven months. How can we do this? Uh, I have conference staff in-house that have white lanyards or these little ribbons on them. Those are your people. If you have any questions, they'll also be the ones that are collecting your questions for in-house here. Uh, and then I want to thank all of them for all of their support to be able to help make the conference. And then I've also got a wonderful team from SEBA that are located down here in Decatur that we had because we wanted to be able to broadcast this thing in a professional way. And let me tell you, these guys are professional and I can't thank every one of them enough uh, for all their work in bringing this. You wouldn't believe this. I feel like I'm on the Starship Enterprise when I'm up here looking at this, you know, desk of computers and everything else. It's pretty impressive. But they're going out with high quality images and stuff like that. So I think you're gonna be quite impressed with the presentation that we're gonna be coming up with. So again, thank you, Siba. Uh, also, I have to acknowledge, I have to acknowledge the, the staff of this, rest, uh, this restaurant, Rocket City Tavern team. Uh, number one, I have been working with them for, well, a year at least, you know, just trying to get all this thing squared away. Uh, it w in 2019, when we did it, I actually passed out a survey and people came back with saying that the, this was exceptional food, it was exceptional service the whole time, and it was a great environment, it was close, people got to collaborate with each other, they were extremely pleased with the location. Uh, and I'm hoping that that's also your case, but I just want to say to the entire Rocket City Tavern team, a big thank you. 
they, they are, they're, aw they're awesome. I think you're going to absolutely, over the next uh, several days, the meals you're going to get are pretty exceptional. Uh, and I just want to say, again, thank you to them. They're, they will bend over backwards for you, doing anything that they can to please you. And uh, it's just, it really is amazing. Uh, I also had people that I connected with at the hotel teams. And I, again, I want to thank them for doing that, that work. So uh, I just think it's, you know, uh, pretty important that we acknowledge and say thanks to all those people for what they're doing. So let's give it a big round of applause. <laughs> also, I want to say that, you know, that SCU is a charitable organization. We are a, a 501c3. And so the only way we can make this thing work is if we got donors and help. Uh, let me clarify to you that all of my projections in the last three years have almost been down to the individual person in predicting numbers. And we have just been able to, every time, be at least profitable <laughs> uh, you know, in terms of what we're doing. And I'm not saying by a lot, but I'm saying by, by it's been pretty close. But anyway, the, uh, the complexity of going to a, a virtual and a hybrid conference is something that's, that's pretty wild. But I just want to say there's a lot of you actually when you registered and, and all the other people, they're donors. Thank you. I mean, this is what it takes. I mean, it's, we're doing this on nothing from anybody. We're not going out for any sponsorships or anything like what other people do. We're just strictly just all taking it in via donations. So everything that you do is appreciated. We have other people who have actually donated quite a bit, are some top patrons we got out there. I decided to take the atmospheric uh, layers <laughs> to show you a little projection of like where some of these people are. But we have one individual, Bruce McAvoy, that, that donated $5,000 to us. That's, that's, he's up in the mesosphere. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Michael Dolnig and uh, Thomas Switajewski. Uh, uh, I mean, they're at the stratosphere level. And then Janice Kata, uh, Kagazwala, as well as Tom Hill and, and Dan McClure, who's actually attending here, helped us to get, and they're in the troposphere. So again, thank you for those donations. We appreciate it. Uh, it helped us to have this conference and to be able to help and, and work with that. Who is SCU? Uh, basically, just to, we, as I told you before, we, are, we started in about 2017, became incorporated. Uh, 2019, we changed that term to uh, being uh, the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies. We also used UAP not in the same vernacular that, that you might hear as unidentified aerial phenomena because the object is transmedium. They're transmedium. They're in the water. They're also in the air. And they're in space, right? So we chose to use aerospace. Makes sense. In the military world, that's all three of those mediums even though aero and space usually implies air and space. But you'll talk to the, the Navy and they'll talk about it in that same context as well. Anyway, so, and I've already told you that we're a charitable organization, uh, but we started about then. Uh, our composition, we have roughly, uh, right now we just exceeded 190 members. Uh, it's composed uh, of a lot of different people uh, that are basically, some people want to get in and just to be able to keep in touch with us and, and, and interact. And then we got some people who are more like in the contributing area. And so we have 92 of those 190 that are actually contributing. And those are people who are doing scientific projects or helping out with the websites or helping us out in a volunteering way. And let me tell you, we have so many volunteer positions that we need filled, it's ridiculous. So if you want to get engaged in SCU and be a part of helping us to volunteer, we have everything from editorial staff that we need to, to get filled. We have administrative staff we have to have. Just volunteerism. And I'm believing that volunteerism is not dead in the world. And, and so every little part that we can get to help us out is very, very critical. 10% uh, or excuse me, 30% of our contributing members have PhDs, by the way, uh, and 54% advanced, and have advanced degrees. So we're, we have a lot of people that are highly degreed. That's pretty awesome. Uh, engineering is the most common uh, educational discipline that you have uh, for this. 19% of them with, uh, are with physics, astronomy, uh, and, uh, are as well. Uh, 
and astronomy, excuse me, at 13%. Uh, 32% of our membership have military backgrounds. We have a lot of people that are connected with the military. I work over here on the arsenal. I'm working in support of Army Material Command. Guess where Project Blue Book was? It was under the Air Force Material Command. So I'm at the four-star level working for the same sister organization that, brought, that Blue Book was in. How interesting that I went around the world. Only I'm over there dealing with tanks instead of aircraft, you know? Uh, anyway, uh, so we have military backgrounds uh, involved here. 20% of our membership is international. We have people in other countries. Lee Dines, who's here helping me out, is from the UK, right? We have other people like, uh, that are out there from Scotland and other places as well. Uh, membership includes individuals who are you know, now or previously were maybe employed by NASA. We have European Space Agency people that are a, a part of us. We have the Canadian Space Agency as a part of us. I mean, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that as, you know, things like potentially the Space Command moves here, we are out there and wanting to work with all of those people in a cooperative way and to see if we can do that. I will point out to you that I was extremely thrilled, and this is just, you know, kudos to us, I think. But if you saw the Gillibrand Amendment, that eventually became the NDA for 2022, the National Defense Authorization Act. SCU was listed as being on a part of a committee along with Project Galileo to be able to help them to work through and understand the UFO phenomena. That's, that's tremendous, you know, in my book, just to even have that being acknowledged. And I would like to still see that, by the way. Um, Anyway, I, and I think if any of you saw those congressional hearings, you might agree that they could probably use a little bit of an education on the subject. <laughs> oh, did I say that? No. Uh, anyway, but uh, seriously, I mean, you know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that, that there needs to be a, a, an understanding of the phenomena a little bit better than there is. Um, uh, some of our mission statement are basically are, uh, is the scientific exploration of UAP, right? Our abstract is to conduct and promote and encourage rigorous scientific study using basically scientific methodologies, right? Uh, to utilize the, the principles of science, the methodologies of science, making sure you're doing things like peer reviews, uh, getting things published in papers and doing scientific you know, articles and that type of thing. And we've got a whole structure that we put in place for that. Uh, we provide scientific analysis and support to like witness cases if you take a look at the Aguadilla case, that's an example. We also took and did the extensive study for uh, the Nimitz case. And, you know, Robert Powell's written and done the Stephenville case. Uh, we've also got the rubber duck <laughs> video that we're doing an analysis of. And, and of course, Peter is going to talk to you about the projects that we're working on there. But, but it, there's many other projects that we could be doing if we had more people doing it, you know, and helping us out, right? Uh, we seek to share credible data. We're, we're about being transparent. Isn't that amazing? You can actually say that you're going to be, unlike the government and maybe some other places that might not be as transparent as you'd like, but we are trying to be transparent because we think that the, basically that, that humanity overall around the planet needs to be able to understand this because it's a worldwide phenomenon, number one. It's not just here in the United States. It's not in your little city or your town. It's all over the place. So it's important that we look at it in that regard. Uh, our goals are to establish a foundation and resource for credible, objective, scientific, peer-reviewed studies. And, and I, as I just pointed out, um, not a lot of organizations are doing that kind of an approach. Uh, to, we're trying to create partnerships with others. We've partnered with UAPX, which I'm thrilled about. We have partnered with, uh, uh, you know, uh, NAR NARCAP. We've also partnered with CUFOS, Center for UFO Studies. So we are trying to partner very carefully with other organizations who can help bring things together and help us out. We're not trying to compete with other organizations. We're trying to bring a common sharing and collaboration together. And I'm extremely thrilled about that. Uh, we're also trying to public, uh, uh, sponsor public networking uh, environments and events to be able to let and communicate with you about what we're doing here. So this is one event in which we're trying to meet our goal, right? 
open dialogue, letting you know what we're talking about, sharing about that. We publish all of our papers up on our website. You know, and so we're gonna continue to do that and we'll hold other kinds of events over a period of time to be able to share that. Uh, the board of directors, you can see here are everything from me, Robert Powell and Morgan are kind of like the foundational group. Uh, you had Larry Cates and Carl Paulson who are both in the emeritus, er, emeritus standard. Uh, I wanna also acknowledge Larry Cates is right now recovering and I wish him well as he, he had, I believe, a, some sort of a stroke or something of that nature, but I'm, we're thinking about him. I think he might be attending. Uh, we've got others in the room, Rohan, uh, Alejandro Rojas. We've got Larry Hancock is joining us virtually. Uh, Dr. Paul Kingsbury from up in uh, Canada is also a part of us, and Peter Reale here as well. So uh, that's our board of directors. We have advisors. We have uh, uh, Sarah Little. We have a science advisor. We have Hector Hiosino is in the room. He's our Latin America contact and advisor we've got. Uh, we have Jim Richardson, who is kind of like a legal advisor we got. And in the room, we've also got their Dr. Joe Donato. Uh, he's our national security guy, as well as we have uh, Mr. Uh, actually, that should be changed over to Dr. Uh, ABD, by the way, he, all but his dissertation. Congratulations on getting that. I mean, we're hoping that you're going to get that dissertation. And by the way, Eric, can you please get to that last chapter and approve him so he can get to, yeah. We, we need to change this over to a Dr. Joshua Peterson, but he's our sen senior intelligence guy, and we want to thank him for also being here. We have additional support people. We got Micah Hanks here. We got Kevin Wright, uh, Steve Sharples, and they're all in the room, and we're looking for a social media manager as well. That's our organization. Uh, we have a lot of different science projects. I'm not gonna spend time on this because actually what you're gonna get is from, Peter's gonna talk a lot about that in terms of our projects overall. But we have a lot of incredible projects going on that I wanted to share with you. Everything from nuclear intentions, looking at nuclear cases, and see if you can derive what the intention is of the object, why that they're there. Uh, you got a USO, basically an underwater you know, submerged objects and looking at geographical locations. You have a characterization study. What have we seen in the past looking forward in terms of the shapes and, and some of the other things? Like we went from flying saucers to suddenly we have, guess what? We got going on right now. We have things like, if I got some here, Tic Tacs. Uh, anyway, uh, so we have a lot of different things going on here and they've, you know, the whole characterization of those changes uh, is what we're talking about. We have uh, looking at UAP and sound. You know, are they all silent? No, they're not all silent. They actually move sometimes and actually have humming noises and other kinds. Can we deduce anything about that? What about whether it's beyond hearing ranges or below hearing ranges, right? So those are important things. And we're also looking at the propulsion effects in the atmosphere and signature kind of like stuff. So that's, uh, these are some of the projects we got working on. Additional projects we got, you know, as I pointed out that we're working with other teams. We are a part of, and we have representatives in Project Galileo. We're thrilled because we've also got people that are attending the AIAA and presenting, Peter and then a number of others, and Dr. Knuth. Uh, we, we actually have presentations on that, so we're getting connected. And by the way, I'll just point out that Ryan Graves, who's gonna be here, is actually the, the new chair uh, of the AIAA, uh, and they have a thing called a uh, UAP community of interest. And he's now chairing that, so we're thrilled to have him here tonight and get to know us a little bit better at the same time hear him. So uh, we're actively promoting congressional actions. We've been engaging in putting press releases thanks to a number of people in the room, Robert uh, and a number of other people, and Alejandro is helping us in terms of the media and getting that moving forward. Uh, so you're going to see more and hear more about us than you even care to because we are going to go big. Uh, we've got a lot of published papers. They're all up on our, like our website. If you get up there, uh, explorescu.org. Uh, we also have other kinds of things like we do analysis, uh, photo analysis, video analysis, isotope analysis. We help out with getting that all connected and we do some other kinds of things as well. And we're trying to like be able to leverage and bring the, the people who can do these kinds of things together uh, and bring labs together. Of course, I'm thrilled about the fact that we have 
Dr. Gary Nolan here, who is going to be on a part of the panel. And there's a man who's doing the metamaterials analysis and everything else, I mean, who's incredible. What an incredible asset we've got with him. And we're just blessed to have him as a part of this whole thing. Uh, anyway, those are kind of like the things that we do. Uh, as I mentioned before, we got lots of ways of becoming a member. Uh, just contact us. We have a contact page on our website. You go contact us and just let us know you're interested and we'll be able to work through that process. We have everything from partners to community access members to contributing members and senior contributing members. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a lot of partners. Uh, and I won't repeat that again, but we have KUFOS, we have UAPX, and we got that. We're looking to be able to add to that. We have a, a presence on social media, everything from our website to Facebook pages to Twitter accounts. And so we try to keep that going and keep that social uh, world uh, talking about the subject. Uh, and so I just want to tell you that I'm, I'm thrilled there was one thing I was going to share with, you know, all of you. There's many of you that have had interest in the subject of UFOs for maybe a long time. And uh, we happen to have in, the, as one of our presenters, uh, Dr. John Alexander uh, uh, here. And uh, I'm thrilled because, let me, one second. I remember reading this book. It's a foreword by Jacques Vallée, and it's called UFOs, Myths, Conspiracies, and Realities. And so I, I read this, and in the beginning of the book, there is a particular section where he's talking about requirements for researching UFOs. You'll love this. In presentations and discussions on the topic of unidentified flying objects, I always begin by starting, you know, stating my position. This is important as there is considerable misinformation about me and my role in the investigation of this fascinating subject. There are three things that anyone who wants to become involved in the study of UFOs will require. Now take, take notes on this, right? While they will be more, they'll, they'll fully explained later, these are the attributes. First, a sense of humor as you will be attacked sooner or later. <laughs> who hasn't been attacked when trying to talk? Second, an understanding of conspiracy theory. You are now part of the plot. Third, and finally, you need a day job or be independently wealthy because nobody is making any money from this subject. <laughs> and, and, you know, I mean, here I am. I'm a relatively, you know, you know, young guy attacking this thing. And I looked at that and said, those are no truer words could I come up with based upon my experience in this long history. So thank you, John, for eloquently putting those three key things for me to focus on together. But that's really what it amounts to. Anyway, and uh, it, it's, an, it's a great book, and I encourage people to read it. But that, that, I will always remember that. In fact, the first thing I did when I talked with a guy, I said, you know, John, there's three little things you told me in the very beginning, you know, and I, I, my whole life has been that, you know. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in terms of just that, but let me go into today's agenda. So the rest of us, the evening, I'm going to be introducing to you uh, Mr. Ryan Graves, uh, and then we'll go through a closing. One thing that I want to point out to you, and I'll point out to you toward the end of it again and remind you, we had a switch on the agenda. I'll mention that for tomorrow. Uh, we've actually had a situation where uh, Dr. Ted Peters, who was slated tomorrow, uh, was going to be presenting uh, and, and John Alexander switched with him. So if you look on the, maybe the agendas up here, I didn't get a chance to change that, but the two of those switched on. And so we'll have, uh, tomorrow we'll have uh, John Alexander presenting. And then on Sunday, Dr. Ted Peters will be talking. So that is one change on the agenda. Uh, Anyway, I encourage people, again, to go into Whova and to, to use that Whova tool. I, if you have any issues with it, let me or my staff know, uh, and we'll be able to get you connected. I encourage people that are attending in person also to get that tool and go up and, and interact. And then I'll, I'll move on from there. That, but anyway, again, I just wanted to say thank you. 